Okay. All right. Well, I think we're going to um, get started. Um, we'll just sort of give a brief introduction here to let people um, continue to file in. Um, but like I've already said, um, we're so thrilled uh, that you could all be here with us today at the Thornton Academy Virtual Open House. Um, this is a real honor. We've got a great group of panelists, um, administrators, teachers, parents, students. Um, you're going to get to hear about the whole Thornton Academy experience, um, no matter where you're coming from. So most of our attendees uh, are coming from our local area, but we have people coming to us from all over the world. Um, and I would say that that is really a hallmark of the Thornton Academy experience in general, um, is that we serve a really wide range of students. Um, you're going to get to hear from about our middle school, our upper school, um, lots and lots of different things. Um, and so we are a large school that serves a really wide range of students. And so wherever you're coming from, we're so glad um, that you can be with us tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and give you an introduction to um, our school. So um, before I get started here, I do wanna just point out on your screen, if in case you haven't done a Zoom webinar before, you'll see um, at the bottom of your screen um, that you have a bar. It has a chat function. Um, it also has a um, Q&A function and a raise your hand function. Um, we are going to do a question and answer period at the end of this webinar. Some of you have already submitted questions and we have those and we'll get to those um, when we get to the Q&A section. But if you come up with a question at any point during the webinar, feel free to type it into the Q&A box um, and we'll answer it um, when we get to that Q&A section. Um, similarly, if you're having any trouble, you can type into the chat um, and, and someone will be able to help you um, as we go through the webinar. So we just wanted to, to welcome you here um, to Thornton Academy. Um, you can see our four pillars here of respect, responsibility, compassion, and investment. You'll hear more about those from our middle school principal, Ms. T Tiffany Robert. Um, but those are really uh, the four values that we um, hold you know, important for our students and our staff here at Thornton Academy. And those really define our student experience of be who you are and become who you want to be. Um, and you're going to get to hear tonight from students, parents, teachers about how Thornton Academy offers so many different opportunities for you and for the students to really be who they are, to find their passion, to find that club, that class that really excites them um, and, and just, and just by, become that person that they want to be. Um, so yeah, um, without any further ado, um, I am going to turn it over to our Director of Enrollment, Mr. Clint Williams. So Clint, if you want to unmute yourself um, and introduce yourself. Thanks, Katie. And uh, thank you, for all the panelists, for joining tonight. And Katie is absolutely correct. We have a, a great representation of the many different people that understand from an intimate level, uh, the Thornton Academy experience. So I appreciate your time and, and effort this evening um, to share with those folks that have tuned in. And, and certainly, uh, again, my name's Clint Williams. I'm the Director of Enrollment at, at Thornton Academy. And it's a pleasure to be speaking with you about some key points, I guess, to, to incite the discussion about the Thornton Academy experience. And without further ado, I'll, I'll just address some of those quick facts that are in front of you right now. I think in today's world, one of the most important things to, to talk about is the fact that Maine, our, our state, is, is one of the most peaceful and safe, safest states in all of the U.S. And so for you folks abroad, uh, you can find comfort in knowing that that's, that's a tremendously valuable fact at the moment. Um, and, and again, you know, the representation of international countries over the years, we've had over 52 countries represented. A current fact right now is there are 28 countries represented on campus uh, at our school right now. And Katie mentioned quickly that it's, we, we, we may seem like a large school. And in fact, we do, we do have a, a quite a large number of students between sixth grade and 12th grade, but it doesn't feel large. So you get to take advantage of 200 different academic offerings um, and, and over 26 advanced placement classes among a plethora of, of different sports, extracurriculars, 
academic enrichment programs and, and the like. So the 1600 total students, boys and girls may seem like a lot, but the way we're structured and, and how we coordinate our classes, our activities and, and things of that nature, it certainly doesn't feel that large at all. And, and most of you know where Thornton Academy is, but for those of you that don't, again, it's located in, in the, the US most safe state in the country, and that is Maine. And we're in the Northeastern part of the United States um, where, where a campus set up, where we have different academic buildings that represent the different uh, classes and, and the different disciplines. In, in each particular building. Uh, we try to do that as much as possible. Located only 15 minutes from the coastal town or the port town or port city, if you will, of Portland, Maine, and, and just 90 minutes from the very traditional city of Boston, Massachusetts. And a couple of miles away from the, uh, the Atlantic Ocean, um, the beautiful Maine coast, the, the beautiful Maine mountain range is only one hour and 30 minutes drive from our campus as well. So the best of both worlds in, in many respects. Here's a, here's a bird's eye view of, of the campus. And as you can see, it's, it's spread out and, and you can see, I think it's over 80 different acres of, of the different facilities. Um, the gorgeous stadium and turf fields, um, the, the state of the art, Arts and New Media Center. We have a 500 seat theater and performing arts location um, and just so many high quality facilities here on campus that, that can be accessed. It's truly an incredible experience and, and feels much like maybe even a small college or, or small type of university experience. Um, Again, those were just some, some snapshots. Folks are going to be speaking more specifically about the, the different programs that we're focusing on tonight. And the next person I would like to introduce is our TAMS, Thornton Academy Middle School Principal, Miss Tiffany Robert. Thanks, Clint, um, and thanks, Katie. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar this evening. Uh, my name is Tiffany Robert, and I am the principal of the middle school. Our middle school here on campus is often referred to as TAMS. Um, as Mr. Williams said, it's Thornton Academy Middle School. We serve students in grades six through eight at our middle school. We are located um, in the, the back of the campus, right behind the gymnasium. Our school is currently 218 students, so we are much smaller um, than the upper school, um, but that serves us very well, especially at the middle school level. So just some quick facts that you're seeing on your screen right now. Um, we roughly are right around 220. Again, this year we're at 218, but we are right around 220, 225 on any given year. Again, we serve students grades six through eight. Currently, we have 10 international students at TAMS, which is very, very exciting. We had a few students join us at the second semester mark, which was right at the end of January, and um, they are already off to an amazing start at TAMS. So we're pretty excited to have um, 10 international students this year. It's really um, amazing. My staff is 100% Apple certified. We spend a significant amount of time um, with technology at TAMS. We are a one-to-one -one school, which means that every student has their own device. Our sixth and seventh graders have laptops. They use MacBook Airs and our eighth graders use iPads. The reason for that is our upper school is also one-to-one -one, and our upper school students all use iPads. So we wanna make sure that when our eighth graders transition to the upper school, they are prepared, they know all the apps, um, and you'll be hearing in just a little bit from one of our upper school teachers, Mrs. Pendergrass, and she can speak more to the technology at the upper school. But again, certainly our goal is to make sure that when students leave us, they are prepared for the upper school. 
we are a very small, close knit community. Um, that is really kind of our marquee point uh, with the middle school. We know every single student. Um, we also have some parents this evening that will be talking to you about their experience. And I think that you will hear them say that we get to know kids. We not only know the student, but we know their family. Um, by the time they're in eighth grade, they're sick of us. Um, they're ready to spread their wings a little bit because we just know them so well. And I take that as a compliment. Um, we have 12 team sports. Um, not only is my entire staff Apple certified, but we are an Apple distinguished school. Uh, we offer a breadth of extracurricular activities for a small school, you name it, we have it. And if we don't, we are more than willing to explore it. So I will give you a very quick example. Um, this year, we had a group of students that wanted to start a gaming club. Even though we are currently in a hybrid model learning, uh, we had some students that were very interested in gaming. They found an advisor. And a few weeks later, we had a gaming club. So if there's a club or an activity that your child is interested in that we do not offer, we will find a way to make it happen. We have 25 teachers um, and staff uh, at the middle school. And one of our goals is to um, really push our STEM curriculum in the coming years. We've done a lot of work with science. You heard a little bit about technology engineering and mathematics, um, but that is definitely a highlight of the middle school as well. Thornton Academy Middle School and our upper school, um, as Ms. Nikitakis shared, um, our pillars really define who we are and define our practice. And our four pillars are respect, compassion, responsibility, and investment. Uh, we use these daily. So this is not something that we've created, kind of put on the bookshelf and dusted off every once in a while. This is a key part of our practice um, at the middle school and the upper school. Speaking specifically about the middle school, I will share that there is not a day that goes by that I don't reference these pillars with our students and staff. Everything from our discipline rubric to our instruction, we involve these pillars. When we recognize students quarterly, everything is connected to the pillars. Students know what they mean, they can define them, and they can tell you exactly what they look like in practice. So this is a, a really a cornerstone. Um, it is the foundation to what we do at TAMS. I would be more than happy to answer any questions you have at the end specific about the middle school as Ms. Nikitakis and Mr. Williams will share. I've been a part of a few of these webinars and usually they have to cut me off because I just love talking about TAMS and could go on and on. Um, but I will certainly answer, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have at the end. So if there's something TAMS specific, please don't be afraid to jot it in the Q&A and I would love to connect with you at the end. So I would now, it would be my honor to introduce to you Mrs. Pendergrass. Dawn Pendergrass is an upper school English teacher at Thornton Academy Upper School. And she's also a former TAMS parent. And her son, I hold near and dear, is a <laughs> fabulous young man. So I will turn it over to Mrs. Pendergrass. Thank you, Ms. Robert. Um, we had a terrific experience at TAMS and I will tell you about that in a few minutes. Um, I just wanna give you a little intro to myself. Um, Thornton Academy, um, has been a family affair for me. My husband teaches math and science at TAMS. My son attended TAMS all through the middle school. My brother, my sister, my mom, five aunts and uncles, niece, nephew, and several cousins all graduated from here. And I came to Thornton Academy after working in a public school for 17 years. And just to give you a tiny little story that kind of speaks to what Mr. Williams was talking about, how a big school it seems like such a big school, but we're able to really get to know students. On my first teacher day, um, I didn't know anyone. And I sat down to lunch in the cafeteria. And because I, I graduated from TA, someone called out to me by my maiden name. And I hadn't heard that in many, many years. And I turned around and it was my track and field coach whom I'd not seen in almost 30 years. 
And that just tells you that students really are not a number at TA. There is no goodly reason why Coach Mendros remembered me from that long ago, but he did. And so currently I teach freshman English at the upper school. So I see, a, see about a little less than half of all the freshmen at TA and many of the TAM students. So um, I'm ready for the next slide. Okay, so Thornton Academy has one of the most extensive course of studies offered um, at any high school um, in this area. And I'd probably rival the country uh, with 26 AP courses, four levels of English language learning classes, foreign languages from um, anything from our traditional French and Spanish to um, Mandarin to uh, Arabic, they're German. I mean, I can't even come up with all of them because there's so many of them and 40 honors courses. And you can see these are some pictures of some of the great facilities that we have that we utilize with these classroom with these particular courses. And you can just take a, a second and take a look through some of the course offerings that we have. I mean, I wish I wish I could have taken some of these courses and I'll tell you a little bit about that in a second. So um, I'm uniquely familiar with both the curriculum and the day-to-day -day happenings at TAMS through both my husband and when my son attended. So I have experienced TAMS as a teacher, a wife, and as a parent. And what I can tell you about TAMS students who then come up to the upper school is that they are prepared to be a high school student. Um, Generally, they have the habits of mind and the study skills that are needed for that transition to the upper school and achieve success during their freshman year. And that transition to high school is much bigger and more challenging um, than many people think. Success at the freshman level often determines the trajectory of the rest of their high school career. So attending TAMS before going on to the upper school sets students up for success. They come already used to completing homework. They're comfortable with the pillars. They have the same technology as what we use at the high school. So the programs are pretty seamless. If you ask a student to bring a PDF into Notability and then upload it to Google Classroom, the TAM students, you don't have to explain anything. They're like, yep, got it. It's all done. So they're very familiar and comfortable with the expectations of, of the upper school. And my department colleagues um, have shared that TAM students come with really strong analytical and persuasive skills that translate well into the freshman curriculum. Um, and even some of our junior level teachers have remarked that they can spot a TAM student in their classes without knowing where that student has come from. Now, we have great students from lots of different sending schools and neighboring districts, but there's something about a TAM student that's pretty special when they're in the classroom. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, the English curriculum and the upper school English. So English at the upper school focuses on more of an analytical approach to literature and writing. And there's a strong emphasis on grammar and elevating their skills in terms of insight and sophistication with, uh, within all the genres of writing, descriptive, narrative, expository, and research. And that's what we really try to do at the upper school is take the skills that they've, they've um, established in the middle school and really elevate them, teach them how to think deeply. Um, we want them to think much more deeply about what they're reading and studying and connect those ideas to their lives and the world around them. Um, I really love Thornton Academy. It was it was a TA English teacher that inspired me to become a teacher. And Thornton Academy is just this place where history and innovation are equally valued. It isn't the same school I graduated from. Those courses that are there that are on the slide are not necessarily the ones that I was offered when I graduated there. But it has changed with an evolving world, yet has found lots of ways to keep like the traditions and the sense of community alive. And stepping back onto campus for me felt completely familiar. And teaching here was, was kind of like coming home. And I'd love to introduce um, Danielle Borgaris, who is a parent of a TA student, but she's also my son's former first grade teacher. So I have a special place in my heart for Mrs. Bogardis. Oh, 
You are too kind. Thank you, Dawn. Um, I have um, two daughters. I have one that was a, is a Thornton Academy graduate from this past year and, um, and had a really uh, amazing experience of, at Thorn Academy for all four of her years. Um, my youngest daughter is in eighth grade right now. So she's in her third year at, um, at TAMS. And when we were looking at schools at what would be the best middle school experience for her, we, um, we were so impressed with everything about Thornton Academy Middle School. And so there were a few things I thought I would just highlight that really stood out for us and continue to stand out for us as parents. Um, and I may sound like, like I'm repeating some things that have already been said because those there are some common threads that I think we tend, uh, many of us as parents have experienced and as a, at TAMS, which are um, like for me, uh, one of the big things is the, the connection between the middle and upper schools. Um, I think that the middle school is able to leverage so many wonderful facilities and aspects of the upper school. And um, whether a student is focused uh, academically or focused in the arts or focused in um, athletics, there is, it, you can find like a student can can access any of their interests um, and the way that the two schools dovetail is um, is really lovely it makes for such a nice transition I think from the middle to the upper school um, for me one of the biggest things that I have um, I just adore about TAMS is the size of the school I feel that um, the staff and the leadership, they really take the time to get to know the students. And that helps me feel really secure as a parent. Um, these can be tricky years, middle school, middle school years can be tricky. And I love knowing the connections that have been developed between the staff and my child. And um, that has been so evident to me over the past year with um, the pandemic and with all of the challenges that that we've faced in in education and socially, I have been just incredibly impressed with how the staff has maintained a high academic bar for students, but also really um, really kept the connections and the relationships going, and they recognize that um, socially kids kids are, are challenged right now. And um, that has been like just front and center um, for me. I, every, every year it's always evident to me that the staff really cares about, um, about the students. And this year it just seems super highlighted. Um, I feel like they are certainly invested in making sure that the students are um, academically prepared. And, and I see that. At the same time, I feel like they also are helping them to be independent thinkers and helping them to be accountable and helping them to be responsible. And those are qualities that um, it's so important to have that modeled and expected in all these different aspects of, of our kids' lives. So I, I'm so grateful that my daughter's been at TAMS this year um, in particular for sure. And the last thing I just wanted to mention is communication. I think that is so important. Um, and I feel that the both the TAMS and the, the upper school staff are, are very approachable. I feel like I get answers quickly. I feel very well informed as a parent um, and, and that everyone's really responsive. And when either one of my children whether it's at TAMS or at the upper school, when they've had questions and they have sought out answers, they've, they've been able to receive really good, timely responses from people, which I think is, um, is across the board. I've seen that with athletics, I've seen it in academics, and I've seen it like with the arts and, and even with leadership. So I think that that's a testament to um, a very like well-oiled, um, a very well-oiled machine. So. Uh, I've had a really amazing experience um, as a parent at TAMS, and I know my, my child has as well, so I can't say enough about it. 
Awesome. All right. Ooh, does that mean I get to in introduce the the one and only Nancy Marston? Ooh, another parent. What a what an honor for me. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Bogardis. Hi, everyone. I'm Nancy Marston. Um, I have two children in the Thornton Academy system. Um, my daughter Ella is I can't believe it, but a sophomore at Thornton Academy, and uh, my son Will is an eighth grader at Thornton Academy Middle School. Um, and I tried to capture um, from them some things that they wanted me to say. I told them that I would be chatting with all of you tonight. And I said, hey, what, what do you think I should tell people about like TAMS and Thornton Academy? So I'm going to share a few things that they shared with me. So this is from the mouths of babes. Um, so when in regards to TAMS, <clears throat> my son and my daughter both spoke so highly of the staff. They felt that everybody there and I think Mrs. Robert even spoke to this but like everybody there knew them knew their strengths knew their weaknesses um, were on top of it I mean they as a parent I loved it because you know my son's a little squirrely and you know you can't get away with anything that like you know the teachers are just on it and really like you know communicating with parents and um, you know at parent teacher conferences we would hear from the staff and I mean man did they know both of my kids, like, I couldn't believe how in touch they were with um, them as students, as, you know, as teens, um, they really uh, had their thumb on the pulse for sure. Um, and the other thing that both of my kids said about TAMS were the friendships that they developed. Um, they, TAMS does such a great job, like um, discussing the pillars, talking about the kind of people that they um you know should be and like when you're a part of the tams community you res you represent um, a higher standard you you know you're expected to you know show the um you know compassion investment you're expected to like walk the walk talk the talk and um and the kids really do i think value that and feel that um you know oh if everyone's expecting me to do it they must believe i can do it and just how much it built up both of my kids was amazing, how they really felt empowered to be, um, you know, the students that they, as parents, we wanted them to be. But, you know, sometimes kids need like cheerleaders in their corner to um, help them to see that, yes, you can do it. And Tam's really provided that um, for both my kids. So just the friendships, the staff, the um, holding them to a higher standard were all really amazing things. Um, my daughter, Ella, who's a sophomore, said to tell you that she was so prepared for high school. So she, her freshman English teacher said to her, wow, you must have gone to TAMS without even realizing that she had. So I think Mrs. Pennegrass said something about that, but they, she like, she was representing TAMS and that is, you know, such kudos to all of the staff at TAMS for just getting her ready because, you know, all these big transitions as a parent, it's worrisome. You, you want them to succeed. You want them, um, you know, to get the most out of these experiences. And for her to say, you know, that she was so prepared um, really did my heart, you know, wonders because, you know, it just took some of that worry away. And the other funny thing that she wanted me to share was um, the summer before she was entering onto Thornton Academy's campus. I mean, you saw the slide with you know, the campus, I was like, I did not go to Thornton Academy. My husband did. Um, he's a 1991 Thornton Academy graduate. And he also teaches at the school. But I said to him, you've got to take her and show her around. And I was so worried. And he said, really? Like, and, and I asked her and she's like, I'm not worried at all. And again, it was because TAMS, I mean, they had that smooth, um, seamless transition back and forth on campus, you know, using the gymnasium and all the other facilities, a library. And so I, I worried for nothing. Like, I guess my common theme here is I worried, worried, worried for both my kids and I didn't need to. TAMS laid the foundation. Um, you know, the transition from middle school to high school was smooth and seamless. Um, I just can't say, you know, enough wonderful things about it. And even the technology piece, like I can't believe what my kids can do on an iPad and it blows me away and now they're teaching me things and you know that's all from their Thornton Academy education so um, you know I, I, I will be eternally grateful to all of the staff at TAMS Thornton Academy the teachers that are a they know their you know their subject area but 
B, they know the kids. They really, truly know the kids. And the communication with parents, um, you know, just kind of completes the circle. It just makes you feel like you're a part of it as well. So, um, yeah, I highly recommend it. <laughs> and then I have the privilege of introducing Marsha Nelson, who is also a Thornton Academy parent. Hi, everybody. Um, show up here. Well, I'm not seeing me, but um, anyway, hi everybody. My name is Marcia Nelson and I am um, a parent at Thornton Academy. I have three children. Um, one is in the eighth grade. Um, he's a son, I have a son in the eighth grade. I have a son who's a freshman and my daughter Taylor, who's here with me too to answer questions later is a junior. Um, I'm also a dorm parent, um, part of the international program. So I have a little bit of a different aspect, you know, opinion there, but um, my biggest thing, and I feel like I'm just um, echoing what everybody else has said, um, so I feel like a broken record, but the biggest thing that I have noticed with my kids is that the staff and the teachers at Thornton Academy Middle School know my kids. They know them so well in and out as students, as friends, as peers, as I just feel like they know them so well. And I think part of that, um, and a huge part of that has helped with the transition up to the high school. Um, because all, you know, as all kids are, they're all very different types of learners. They're all just very different people. And I feel like Tams did a really, really good job of meeting each individual, each um, one of my kids individually, right where they were, right where they needed. Um, if my daughter needed to be challenged a little bit more, they met her there. If my son needed a little support, they met him there. I just felt like they knew my child and they knew what they needed and they provided it at every time. And I just feel like that was a really good um, that's my, my biggest thing that I loved about, about TAMS. Um, and I feel like anything else is everything that what everybody has said, like the technology is, is really helpful to help them um, transition to the high school. Um, but the biggest thing is I feel like they know our kids. And then even when they get to the high school, I feel like even though it's a big school, um, it doesn't feel like that. It feels um, the, the teachers and the staff and the, the model that we have here has really made it so a big school feels like the small little pods all around like you just find people that I feel like people know my kids they know them well um, and it doesn't feel that big when you're here it feels like a family it feels smaller and more intimate so yeah awesome sweet all right Taylor do you want to introduce yourself real fast and just talk a little bit about what your Thornton Academy experience has been like um I'm Taylor this is my mom um I am a junior up at the high school and I was at TAMS for um, all three years. And I really enjoyed my experience there. Um, the community was super close. Like we were all like a super, there was only like 80 kids in my grade. So we were like, we were all just friends. And it definitely helped with the high school because the high school is a lot bigger. But knowing like walking into a class and just seeing even one kid from TAMS just made you like feel better because you knew you had somebody in the class from like your school before. It, it was definitely a good community and definitely helped a lot um, with the transition. Awesome, sweet. All right, thanks, Taylor. All right, and then we have one other student um, with us who is actually my stepson. So this is a whole family affair here. So Oliver, uh, maybe you can introduce yourself and you've had a little bit of a different experience because you did not go to TAMS. So what's it been like um, being at the high school? Hi, thank you, Katie. Um, yes, I didn't go to TAMS. I went to a small private school in Portland called Breakwater. The uh, class size for my eighth grade graduating class was just like 42 kids. So it was a completely different experience from anything I could have ever expected to get from Thornton because it was a much smaller school. But I was, I gotta say, I was very nervous when I was, knew I was going to transition into a much bigger high school experience. And I, I just I didn't think I was prepared for it, but when I uh, first arrived on campus, I was like shocked. There were uh, older kids in the hallways, there were teachers and they were guiding you around, telling you where your classes were and just being an overall uh, just great help for the transition into a big high school experience. And um, it, it, like that, and I gotta agree with uh, Taylor, it's just like, the community is just so great. They're helpful, they're kind, and just very welcoming and just 
overall amazing and just really helped me transition from a very small private school into a very big uh, high school experience. Awesome. All right. Thanks so much. That's really great. So um, that's sort of the end of our presentation. Um, so, you know, I think you heard all of our panelists talk a lot about, um, you know, the the, the four pillars, respect, responsibility, compassion, and investment, um, and how they really set on our, our foundation of tradition and support our strong community. Um, and we at Thornton Academy believe that all of our students can be who they are and become who they want to be. Um, and that is what we, what, we, what we really hope for them is that everybody can find what their passion is um, and, and develop that as much as possible. So um, we are at this point gonna transition into the question and answer period. Um, so we have one question that came through so far in the Q and A box. Um, just as a reminder, down at the bottom um, of your screen, you have a box that's the um, Q and A. So please feel free to type questions in there um, and we'll get to them. So the first question um, I'm gonna throw to uh, Tiffany Robert, our principal of TAMS and, and Tiff, uh, this, uh, family parent is looking um, to hear about the teaching methodology uses at TAMS. So um, how, what can you talk to us about the development of students that are beyond academics with the mind, body, and spirit? So what's the teaching philosophy method methodology and how do we address, you know, sort of that whole student experience, mind, body, and spirit? Sure, happy to. Thanks, Katie. Um, and first, I just have to say, I just love hearing from all of these parents Thank you so much. Thank you for all the kind words about TAMS um, and Taylor Nelson. Oh my gosh, you're so amazing. So thank you for being here. Um, but back to the question, Katie, as you had asked. Um, so really at TAMS, I, I like to be very honest and upfront pe with people. Um, as I know, you know, Mr. Williams in our admissions office does the same, but um, I just like to, uh, this is such a good question because I wanna make sure that when we are accepting students at TAMS, that parents and students were all on the same page about what we offer at TAMS and our practice. So I will be very honest, we follow a very traditional approach at Thornton. And a big reason for that is we, our goal is to prepare students for the upper school. So as you heard this evening from Dawn Pendergrass, um, our English teacher at the upper school, students enter Thornton Academy. It is our goal for them to enter Thornton Academy upper school to, and to perform at a very high level. So we want them to enter at an honors level or a college prep level. Our goal is to make sure that they are prepared for those courses and prepared academically, but also as Ms. Pendergrass talked about, we want them to be prepared as far as habits of mind as well. We want them to be independent. We want them to be critical thinkers. We want them to be problem solvers. We want them to be able to work in a group. That's important. Um, we need to make sure that they know how to work with other people. Uh, so we're working on all of those, those things at TAMS, but we do have a very traditional approach to, to teaching and learning. So there's a lot of group work that happens. There's a lot of independent work. There's um, some um, student-centered type of activities, certainly. And there's also some lecture. So there's a little bit of balance of everything, um, but it is, it is a very traditional approach. And again, our goal is to prepare students for success at the upper school. That's the name of the game for us. And it has proven um, quite successful as you've heard from several of our parents and panelists and, and students. Taylor is a shining example of that. Um, as far as the entire student, mind, body, spirit, we spend a lot of time as a community. And I will say, I, I feel like this word is a little bit overused right now, but back when things were normal, quote unquote, not the hybrid model due to COVID, but back when things were normal, um, we spent a lot of time as a community. So we were together a lot. We would do community building activities where students would get to know one another. They'd get to know kids in their class, in their grade level, but also students in other grade levels. So we'd have these community building days where sixth graders were also spending time with seventh and eighth graders and getting to know them. So then when they walked into the cafeteria and saw an eighth grader, they may know who that student is. Um, we spent a lot of time with that uh, at the beginning of the year. We also spend a lot of time with pillars 
Um, we do have a full-time school counselor. Her name is Miss Carter. She is fabulous. She works with all of our students. She takes a um, approach. She spends a lot of time with our sixth grade transitioning them to middle school. So I don't know if um, you know some of our parents here remember, but back when kids were in sixth grade, there was a class called guidance class where our counselor went in and worked with students on what it meant to be a middle schooler at TAM. So she would dive into the pillars. She'd spend time on transitioning to middle school, executive functioning skills. She'd spend time on what it means to be a good friend. What's a healthy relationship? Um, what are some of the things you look for in a friend? So we spend a lot of time, I think, on the character building piece as well. Um, Katie, did I answer? I feel like there was a second yeah. part. Was there a second part about the hybrid? Did I see that or? That's I... another question, but we'll get to that one in a minute. Okay. Okay. Um, but there, there is a follow-up question um, that came through that I think you kind of already addressed by talking about um, the school counselor at, at TAMS, Haley Carter. Um, but this question says, what support is given to students regarding social and emotional issues? So maybe you can talk about that a little bit and then I'll talk about it a little bit at the high school as well. Sure. The upper school. So again, our school counselor, Ms. Carter, is full-time counselor. She's available um, every day. She works very closely with our sixth graders, but students certainly can access her um, at any time during the school day as needed. She's fabulous. Um, she does run small group lunches at time for kids. Um, so students can go and sit with her during lunch and that may be with a group, it may be individual. It really varies based on, on the needs. But um, Ms. Carter's wonderful and um, she's available to support students. Yeah. And then at the upper school, we have a full school counseling office as well. So um, there are eight, I think it is, um, school counselors at the upper school and they work with students um, in grades nine through 12. So you um, are assigned a school counselor in grade nine um, and then you'll they'll work with you in grades nine, 10, 11 and 12 um, just on sort of you know academic support. But then also if there's any social emotional issues um, that would be the first point of contact. We do also have multiple social workers um, at the um, at the upper school that students can access um, if it gets to that point. Um, but we, you know, we really rely on our pillars of respect and compassion um, and responsibility, I guess, for that matter, too, um, when it comes to social emotional issues. The teachers are e extremely supportive, and you've heard from all of our parents that um, the teachers are really dialed into what the students are feeling. Um, and so if they're generally, if there is an issue, like the teachers will pick up on that um, and work with the student directly as well. But um, yeah, we have a full school counseling office with social workers that are there to support students in, in social emotional needs. So, um, okay, great. So um, a quick question here that I think we can answer, how many students go to the high school? So at the upper school right now, there's about 1,350. Um, so in each grade, uh, usually there's about 350, 300, 350. So we are the largest school in the state of Maine, um, but you've heard from a lot of our panelists too that it doesn't feel like it. It doesn't feel as large as perhaps um, it is. Um, okay, so I've got a question I'm going to throw to Taylor. All right, so Taylor, it's been a couple of years, um, but maybe you remember, um, what does a typical day look like for a TAM student? So we're gonna go with when Taylor was a student, again, when this was not a hybrid model, and then we'll get to the hybrid model question in just a second, but um, when you were at TAMS, Taylor, what would a typical school day look like for you? Um, a typical day we at TAMS, we had a, we, like at the high school, we do a four block schedule. And so you have like maroon and gold days. So on your maroon days, you had four classes and on your gold days, you had four classes. Um, and so the schedule, like they change for like every student kind of. And so you always had a study hall, which I believe was always block one on maroon days. Um, so that was like a whole school study hall. So it let kids like um, talk to teachers if they needed help and like work on projects. Um, and then in the sixth grade, I think they have two like UA classes, which are like music, art, uh, gym, and guidance. And then seventh and eighth grade, you have one. Um, and then you add like a one ELA class, I think. 
So that's what like the typical schedule is. It's like four blocks and there's two lunch waves too. So you're, um, yeah, there's two lunch waves. Um, I'm gonna think what else. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, well done. Mrs. Robert, anything to add or? She nailed it, perfect. Great, okay, good. And then we've got a question about the hybrid model, um, which is actually pretty similar to, I think, high school and middle school. Uh, Mrs. Pendergrass, do you wanna tackle that one? Talk a little bit about the hybrid model and what that's been like? Sure. Um, we have almost, we have three groups. Um, cohort A goes on Mondays. They're face-to-face -face half of the time, so they go to school uh, Monday and Tuesday and follow their gold, maroon and gold days. And then we have um, the other cohort that also attends synchronously um, from home. So we have, TA has invested in these great owls there are these enhanced video and audio um, systems that allow for there to be interaction between the kids that are that are at home um, signing into Zoom and the kids that are face to face in the classroom. So we have a lot of interaction. Last um, last week we did a group discussion, and with the hand raising tool, they were able to to talk to each other, which is completely amazing when you think about it. Um, what we've been able to do in the span of a year. Um, so it's two cohorts. And then we also have a fully remote group that just attends both Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, just fully remote. And they've all been integrated into the class. And I feel like each class has their own sort of culture and climate. And uh, uh, it's really great. Wednesdays are asynchronous days for um, alternating between maroon and gold classes each week. And that's a day for students to um, do assignments, but they're done asynchronously. So they're posted in Google Classroom, um, posted in Google Classroom, and so they can they just work their way through it so that it continues with the continuity of instruction. And I believe all teachers at the upper school, and I know at at Tams as well because my husband holds them as well, has office hours. So this has been such a wonderful opportunity to work with students. Um, on Zoom and give extra help. And um, that's been pretty terrific. So yeah, I think that's, Great. Asa, I think I got everything, didn't I, Miss Robert? Did I miss anything? You did, perfect. Perfect. Awesome. All right, great. Um, we have a question for our two students. So Oliver and Taylor. So Oliver, I'll, I'll, I'll throw this one out to you first since Taylor, we already heard from Taylor once. Um, so what made you choose Thornton Academy? And I guess I would, I would also, you know, tack on to that. What, why would you recommend Thornton Academy to a prospective student? So any Well, uh, the, the main, I guess the, the biggest reason that I chose Thornton Academy, I mean, like, uh, I'm in Maine. They're, they're amazing high schools, like down the block. You could find amazing high schools all over Maine. Thorn Academy is just one of them. But uh, in particular for me, uh, my mom was living in Portland and my dad was living in Saco. So, uh, and we thought that uh, it would be very difficult for uh, my parents to juggle bringing my sister to the uh, the school that she was attending in Portland and also getting me to school in Saco. So it, it was just, it was too much, but we realized that Thornton had a high school and a middle school, which would be perfect for both me to go to the high school and my sister who was uh, currently attending TAMS. So that was just my personal reason. And also, I mean, I, I've seen the, the campus several times because obviously my stepmom Katie works here. And I just, I met a lot of the teachers and I just, they're just, they're just amazing teachers. And I just wanted to be a part of their community. Awesome. But why would I recommend, recommend it to someone else? I mean, yeah. but I don't really even know where to start. Uh, the, a, the community is excellent. B, the teachers are helpful. C, I mean, the wide range of classes that the school gives out is just amazing. You could, you could, do programming if you wanted. You could do, I took a uh, class semester one on digital imaging, like photography and editing in Photoshop. And it was a, it was a blast. There's just uh, like, there's just, you could really like do anything you really wanted to at Thorn. 
Awesome. Cool. All right. Thanks, Oliver. All right. Uh, Taylor, any thoughts on that? I mean, yeah. Why do, well, like, I guess the question really for you is like, why would you recommend TA to another student? Um, I would definitely recommend it. Like I've said before, um, I was a big fan of the community because there are other middle schools that were just a bigger size with more people. And I think that could be a little overwhelming to like a sixth grader, but I definitely felt more comfortable in like this, the small size of TAMS and the way that like you just got to know everybody. And same with the high school, which it's a big high school, but the way it's designed, it makes it feel like it's not as big as it really is. Um, and it wasn't like it was, I was nervous to like transition, but it wasn't like the teachers and everything made it really easy to um, move from a smaller school to a bigger school. Awesome, cool. All right, thanks Taylor, um, great. Okay, um, so next we have um, a question sort of shifting gears a little bit um, to the international boarding students. So Marsha, I'm going to ask you to put on your hat, your work hat here, not your parent hat, uh, but your work hat. So can you tell us a little bit about what it's what um, life is like for international boarding students? What it, what's a typical day like? What are the dorms like? Tell us about the dorm parents. We're lucky that we have two dorm parents on this call. Um, and Mr. Clint Williams lived, also lives on campus. So we got some people that are close to the community, but Marsha, maybe you can take a stab at this one. What's, what's life like for an international boarding student? So I would say um, right now, um, one of the advantages right now of being an international boarding student is that in a hybrid model, we have, um, I feel like the kids don't have as much, they have a group of people that they can hang out with. So for example, like you go to school every day, um, they have cohorts here. So for example, I live in a dorm with um, a boys dorm here. We have the middle school boys here and some high school boys here. And so um, the first cohort goes to school and the other the other cohort is in their, their rooms doing classes. But then after school, um, just like any other day student, we have kids that are going to be hanging out in the dorm with their friends, maybe going to the gym. Um, we offer trips on the weekends, but they might be participating in activities if they're being allowed. Like right recently, we got to open up some of the sports got to open up. So kids are going to sport practices um, of any kind, club activities. They're going to different clubs. Um, in the evenings, we're maybe a little bit different than um, other schools, I think, because we have specific time at night where it's quiet hours or study hours. So we have time every evening where the dorm is guaranteed to be quiet. Students are working on stuff academic. As a dorm parent, um, I would be walking around making sure the kids were needed any help um, if it was my night to be on duty. Um, and then in the evening, they'll have a little bit more free time and then lights out. And so I think it's very similar to any other you know, schedule of a kid that would have. Um, it's just different because instead of going home, you're coming back to the dorm and and hanging out here. Um, same as the weekends, you know, we have lots of activities that we offer, mall trips, uh, movie trips, ski trips, you know, anything that the kids want to do, um, we will offer that. And there's a lot for them to do. They're never, there's never a lack of activities, put it that way. Awesome. So, yeah. Yeah, and I think I think Clint mentioned this, but um, I think it's worth noting too that even during this pandemic year, we have 28 countries that are represented on our campus this year, um, which is really really remarkable. So it's a very diverse um, community. We've got some American borders, most are international students, and um, yeah, they come from all over the world. And and Marsha and Tiff is also a dorm parent, um, and and the dorm parents just do a really, really amazing job of creating a, a community of students that have never met each other. They're from all over the world, but then they really become like family. Um, and yeah, it's it's an awesome program. So, um, okay. So Tiff, speaking of you, uh, we've got a question to to, to toss out at you, um, which is how are you preparing for incoming sixth grade students? who may have had a less than ideal fifth grade experience due to the pandemic. And I know this is something that you've made some, some changes to you know, what you normally do for sixth grade. Could you talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. And that is a great question. Um, phenomenal question. I'm getting more and more of that type of question just given what's going on. Um, one of the things that we did this year with our sixth grade team is we increase the amount of mathematics and English language arts instruction that students have daily. So what we've done is we've doubled 
and I will repeat that, doubled the amount of instruction in math and English language, language arts. So students in sixth grade have 80 minutes of math a day, and they have 80 minutes of English a day. And the reason we did that was to really double down on those two content areas because we recognized students were coming to us. And this was, to be honest, this decision was actually made pre-pandemic. Um, we were finding that students were coming to us below grade level. So what we decided to do is we said, let's focus on math, let's focus on English. And we cut our social studies and science curriculum by about 50%. So what we do is we do science for two quarters and we do social studies for two quarters. And really the rationale behind that is if students are solid readers, writers and have the core skills for math, we're gonna see that transfer in science and social studies. We also do a really great job of folding in social studies with our English language arts. So we'll do a lot of nonfiction, we'll do some current events, we'll tie that into our English curriculum more so than we ever have. And same with um, science. Any opportunity we can weave science into math, we will do that. But I will be very honest, the focus is getting those foundational skills and making sure that students have that foundation. So when they move up to seventh grade and then eventually eighth grade and the high school, we have at least lessened that gap. Um, we were seeing it before the pandemic, we are definitely seeing it this year, and I am so thankful that our headmaster supported um, my thinking. I always go to him and say, I've got this crazy idea, and he's so good. Um, if I can tell him, you know, this is best for kids, I just know it. We're going to make a difference. He's so wonderful at supporting us. So um, this, I can tell you already, we are seeing our sixth graders are moving right along. Um, they are further along this year than our sixth graders were last year before we made this move. And that is impressive given the situation that we're in with this pandemic. So we're pretty excited about what we're seeing. Um, and I hope that addresses your question, but I can tell you, we will close that gap at TAMS. Awesome. So we have two questions here that I'm going to um, try to answer and then maybe if someone else has any input they can enter and answer as well. So vaccination, vaccination and CDC guidelines. So we have three nurses at Thornton Academy. We have full nursing staff with three nurses. Um, we are in close contact with the CDC um, for making sure that um, all of our schools, whether it's middle school, whether it's upper school, whether it's residential dorms, um, are uh, adhering to all of the CDC guidelines. In fact, um, our residential life nurse, um, Danielle Tabor received a commendation uh, from the main CDC um, about how um, she's handled the pandemic um, and the COVID outbreak, um, you know, in the dorms. And so it's been, we've been really fortunate to have a wonderful nursing staff that um, takes it very seriously and has done everything to keep our students safe. So I don't know if anyone else has anything to add to that about vaccination and CDC guidelines, but so, I mean, this is Clint speaking yeah, and go for it. in terms of the vaccination status that that's a that's a tough question I, I would I would ask for more specific information as to what the question really is asking uh, um, I'm going to make an assumption that um, they're asking if, if there is a some sort of uh, program or process in place to get our teachers vaccinated and the answer is, the short answer is yes, but we are at the mercy of how the state is going to roll that out. But we are certainly uh, in communication about that and how to do that, number one. Secondly, I would like to piggyback on a little bit of, of Danielle's, Danielle Tabor's commendation from the CDC. Not only did she get commended, or we as a school get commended on how we are handling the situation, but also the commendation was our pro, you know, how, how we are proactively handling that. And, and not only are we adhering to the CDC guidelines, but we are actually exceeding them in many respects um, in, in terms of really taking care. And when you have a, a familial situation like folks do at home, in the dorm situation, it truly is a familial situation and handled as such. And so when, 
when when people are saying maybe they don't feel well or or whatnot, there's a heightened awareness. There are there's testing, there's communication, there's all kinds of things in place to just make sure it's as safe as possible. And and that being said, jumping into another question about has it has it affected um, Thornton Academy's extra curricular programs and activities and things of that nature. Absolutely, yes, it has. But with all of the guidelines and support from the CDC about how to, how to address those situations and the fact that we're very proactively making judgments and uh, making policies for us so that when kids do in fact go with their cohorts or their bubbles, if you will, that it is, is as safe as if it were to be your own, your own family cohort. So um, knock on wood, it's been very, very successful. And I think one of the specific examples of how and why, how it has been so successful is the fact that, that we are able to continue to provide, provide those extracurriculars, those, those activities, those after-school programs, those weekend programs and things like that. So um, again, we can only do the best job we can do and then a little bit more and hope for the best. And in fact, it's paid off very, very well at this point in time, so. Awesome, great. Marsha, do you have anything you wanted to add to that? Or I feel like, yeah. Um, not really, I think that really explains um, as best that you can. Like when you say, when the question was, how has it COVID-19 you know, changed or, or impacted extracurriculars and, and all that. Some of it um, was pretty much left up to the state and what we were allowed to do. But when it comes to like a dorm student it specifically um, and activities, I honestly think it has just been, we've just adapted as best we can. Like I think that we've done the best that we can. We've done a good job of offering as many activities to keep the kids engaged and busy um, outside of the school hours as we can with still keep them safe you know we might offer a mall trip one weekend but if if something is changing we might not offer that next weekend and we'll offer something different right on campus you know i think that we've been we we still have a full weekend of activities whether it's traveling off campus or staying on campus and offering things right here within your little your dorm cohorts but i feel like we've we've had to adapt but i feel like i honestly think we've done a really good job to offer as much as we can to have something to do yeah, I agree. And we talk about sometimes how the kids that live in the dorm are kind of lucky because like they do have other kids around, you know, and it's easier to get together than your, than your circle or your bubble of people are, are kind of a dorm wide versus just your family. So they have yeah. more interaction, I think. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Cool. All right. Um, so it is just after eight. We like to try to keep these to an hour, but there's a few more really good questions that I want to get um, get around to. But if you do need to drop off, we totally understand. Um, and we appreciate everyone being here. So we'll get to the rest of the questions. Um, so we've got another question about uh, the middle school. So um, so Tiffany, um, can you talk a little bit about um, what opportunities in middle school there are for arts and theater? So maybe like you know, this year is obviously very different for arts and theater, but just in general, what kind of opportunities are there? Sure. Um, so in addition to the regular um, art and music classes that are offered through the curriculum, we offer some extension activities for students that are really um, excited and interested in arts and theater. So we have an after school art club that is led um, by our art teacher, Mr. Drake up. So students that are really passionate about art and just want to um, take their work to the next level, we encourage them to join the after school art club. That's really popular. We also have um, a wonderful uh, musical director. His name is Dave Stebbins. He does a great job. So in addition to music class, we have a band, we have a chorus. So students that wanna sing or play an instrument. We also offer um, strings. So students that wanna play the violin or cello are, are welcome to do that and are, are encouraged to participate. One of the um, things that I'm most proud of at the middle school is every year we put on a musical and we have nicknamed this the Super Bowl of Tams because it is a huge event. Any student that wants to participate is welcome to. So we do not cut um, at TAMS for the musical. So every student that wants to participate is given a part and it is really quite amazing. It's very special. Um, typically we do a performance that we're able to um, uh, 
produce uh, right here on campus. We use the auditorium. So I know some folks um, spoke earlier about um, utilizing the entire campus and we do that and the musical is a great example of that. So we perform right in our auditorium here at Thornton Academy. One of the highlights is always inviting local elementary schools over to see the show. Um, and of course our students enjoy performing for their peers and families as well. So it really is a highlight, but it's, um, it's quite special. So again, we have everything from band, chorus, strings, the musical, after school, um, art club, and the art club actually usually is collaborative with the musical and they do a lot of the set work, set design, costume making, um, so it's all connected. I hope that answers um, the question, but I'm happy to get into more detail if um, that individual would like to hear more. Awesome. Tiff, can I throw one more question right back at you? This one oh. came through, sorry, I don't know. There's so many right now. Okay. Um, this one came through earlier and I just don't wanna forget it. Can you talk a little bit about eighth grade and do eighth graders have the opportunity to take classes at the upper school? What that look like? Oh yes, of course, great question. Yes, yes, yes. Um, one of the things we also pride ourselves on is really meeting students where they're at. And sometimes that means that they've tested out of our curriculum. So students that are excelling, there is no reason to hold them back. We will push them forward. So we do have internal assessments at TAMS that we um, will give students. So these decisions are based on, on data-driven assessments. We worked collaboratively, um, especially I'll use the English department as an example with Mrs. Pendergrass here, but the department chair Kate Timberlake at the upper school has been phenomenal to work with. So we have created an assessment that um, she has been a part of. She knows what this assessment is and we've really targeted some very key areas. So we give this to students and actually this is another great example because Taylor Nelson <laughs> um, took this assessment, did very well. I hope I'm not making you blush here, Taylor, but you know me, I can't help but brag about my Tamsters. Um, and so a student like Taylor, you know, got pushed up and took um, honors level courses while in eighth grade. So English is just one example but students take courses in math. So we have students that will take Honors Algebra 1. We've had students take Honors Algebra 2. In fact, one year we had um, a seventh grader that uh, tested into Honors Algebra 2 and then also doubled up and took Honors Geometry as a seventh grader. So that is rare, but it does happen. And it's just an example, again, of making sure that we're meeting students where they're at. We have also had students take um, freshman um, Honors Physical Science, and we've had students take courses in our uh, World Language program at the upper school as well. So the sky is the limit um, and we always involve parents in that process. So before moving a student to a course at the upper school, we always make sure to communicate with the parents to make sure that it's the right fit. Because even though a student may academically be ready for the curriculum, they may not be ready socially, emotionally, uh, you know, for that setting. So we do like to involve the parent and make sure that um, it is the right fit. Thank you. That was really great. Okay, so we have two questions here. Um, I'm going to I'm going to do my best to, to answer the, the first one here, which is do uh, do we think that next year our class schedule will be regular or still hybrid. And that is an excellent question. Um, and I think yeah I see Clint on there. I think we don't know. Um, so we are we don't know. So Maine is a Maine has been one of the best states for um, you know one of the states with the lowest COVID rate this entire time. We are doing. We are one of the best states for getting um, our students vaccinated and our teachers vaccinated and, and getting people vaccinated. So we're we're moving ahead in that direction. But as for what next year is going to look like, I think it's too early to say. Um, but what we can say is that no matter what our, our class schedule is going to look like, whether we are back fully, whether we are doing a hybrid mo model, whether we offer an option to our students to choose what feels right for them, um, we will 
100% take care of our students no matter what situation that we're in. Um, and I think that's what you've seen this year um, with, you know, we've been hybrid, but then we've had to go fully remote at times. Um, and we just are always there to be really flexible and nimble um, to do what's best for students um, and make sure that their learning is maximized. And so that is what I can say um, without knowing what next year is going to look like um, at all. All right, and then our final question, um, I think, unless there's another one that comes through, uh, is uh, what makes TAMS better than public middle school? So our poor parents have been sitting there just listening. Um, so parents, I'm gonna call on you guys. So Danielle and Nancy, can you tell us a little bit about why you why you chose TAMS? Like, why did you choose TAMS? Like, why you could have gone to a public option, but you didn't. And so, why did you choose TAMS? And 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 it sounds like you're you know happy with your decision, but just you know tell us a little bit about that. So, Nancy, I see you've, you've unmuted yourself. You're ready to go. Let's hear it. <laughs> um, you know, for me, um, it I think the main um, choice because my daughter was the first one to go and considering like her academic needs she was definitely a child who needed some um, small group she was very um, shy coming into middle school a little bit unsure of herself and you know it just felt safe it felt comfortable um, I, we gave our kids you know the options because living in Saco, the choices were, you know, Thornton Academy Middle School or um, Saco Middle School. And both of them were like, no question, like Thornton Academy Middle School, 100%. And I think they felt safe, you know, like it, it is small, um, it's individualized, um, it's family oriented. And, you know, as a teenager going into middle school, I mean, what more could you want, you know, than to feel comfortable and safe and accepted. Um, so that's why we chose it. Awesome. Thanks. Danielle, anything to add? Um, I think I have a, some similar thoughts as, as Nancy. I have kind of like, I guess, an interesting um, interesting aspect with that. My oldest actually went to the public middle school. And I think, um, I don't know that betters the necessarily the word that I would choose. I think that um, there is, I think it's knowing your child and knowing what environment is going to help them to be most successful. Um, and I think that for for us, we could look at our, our two children, even though they products of the same home, very, very different um, learning styles and things that, that uh, in terms of their, their confidence and their areas of strength and their areas of opportunity. And so I think when we were looking for our youngest, um, there were so many things about Tams that just fit who she is. And I know it was like, we can, as a family, look at that decision and know that it was absolutely the right the right one for her as a learner. Um, I do think looking at any school, whether it's public or private, that looking at the size I think does make a difference. And I think we've we've kind of said that a lot tonight. And I think that there's a lot to be said for a smaller school, um, a close knit school, and and you know and I. I guess it's like at risk of like over saying it, I think that the the staff at TAMS is really um, exceptional. And I think having a team of educators that are all at that, um, have set a really high bar that are, you know, very skilled and highly invested and enthusiastic. I think it's, it's, it's rare to find a school that is that, um, that completely filled with, um, you know, all of those attributes that make you feel really comfortable as a parent. So if, if I had to pick like a particular trait, um, I think it would probably be like the size and coupling that with the staff. Awesome. All right, great. 
Thank you so much. So I just want to give a big thank you um, to all of our attendees for sticking it out. Um, you know, this is a little bit longer than we had anticipated, but I think we just had some really great questions and we hope that you had all of your questions answered. If you did not have all of your questions answered, um, we I will send a follow up email to everyone tomorrow. Um, please feel free to respond. We are happy to set up a one on one call, um, either with someone from our admissions office, myself or Clint or one of our other other admissions uh, associates or with um, Ms. Tiffany Robert, she's offering one on one sessions as well. Um, for those of you that are um, looking at TAMS, we are going to have a more specific TAMS um, open house specifically mainly geared towards incoming sixth graders. Um, that will most likely be in March and we'll make sure to let you know when we have chosen a date for that. So thank you to all of our panelists. Thank you to all of our attendees. Um, you know, you heard a lot about um, our Thornton Academy family um, and we really hope that you will consider joining um, our family so that maybe next year you can be a, a panelist on our webinar. So thank you. Um, Panelists, can you guys stay on for just a hot second um, and we'll just do a little wrap up. So thank you and um, please be in touch if you have any questions. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs>